What's up, glow getters? Welcome to Sister Figure Certified, the podcast powered by the IGC Coaching School. And I'm so excited that you're here. My name is VP Wright. I'm the digital marketing manager for IGC, and I produce this podcast. When I am on an episode, it's typically me doing a quick how to video that involves tech or some type of strategy that I specialize in, or um, we just got done with the workshop and it's the second option. We did. We just got done with the workshop yesterday. Yesterday was the first live option of Scare Your Business and it was amazing. We had 49 attendees show up and participate with Liv and Sam, which you'll be able to get a sneak peek of tonight. And this workshop was a little different. It was specifically for the folks who have been in business for a while. I know if you're listening to this podcast at the moment, you're either an aspiring coach or you've been coaching within your first year. But if you've been listening to this podcast and you've been listening to us for years and you either went through IGC or you went through a different program and you've been gaining all of the knowledge and goodness that has came from this podcast since we launched a few years back, then this workshop was literally made with you in mind. It was made for the entrepreneur who's been making money in their business for several months, several years now, who wants to scale and go from multiple five figures to multiple six or even seven figures in their business. It's for the therapist who's been watching this podcast and thinking, you know, I want to go into life coaching, but I don't know where to start. It's for the content creator who has been wanting to go into coaching and even does consulting at this point, but doesn't know what that pivot looks like. It's for the influencer who has been building a business for years, maybe even a decade, but wants to add some more intentional uh, work around either coaching or wants to add some more service-based work to their business, but honestly doesn't even know how to offer that to their audience. It's for the person who's listening to this podcast right now who had gone through level one training and essentially is thinking about level two. And anyone, honestly, who is bored with their business, that's the best way I can explain it. You're either in it and you've been working and you've been building, but there's still something that's missing and we want to help you find a solution. So in this episode, what we are focusing on and what you're going to hear is 10 minutes from the workshop that focuses only on different business models that several six and seven figure certified coaches in our business, in our company, in our community. Um, have used to scale their businesses to either six or seven figures, which is why, of course, they're six figure certified, right? These models are working for them because they're diversifying where they make their money. It isn't just with one stream. It isn't just with one option. And it isn't just with one offer. It's with multiple options that they're using to scale. A lot of them involve a combination of passive and active work. You may have a bit of a hybrid situation. And we want to show you these options because we want to show you how possible it truly is to be able to grow a business, whether it's by yourself, whether it's with a team, whether it's with your community, et cetera, on just how possible it is. So what we're doing and what I'm going to do for y'all and the way I'm arranging this episode is after this intro, you're going to get those 10 minutes of what those business models look like. And then we'll come back to me and I'm going to talk about my business model, which is actually featured in this, um, in the workshop overall. Once I'm done, I am going to let y'all know that the replay for the entire workshop is available and it's free. Like, do you hear me? It's free. It's free. And it's available to you all. It's a great way to just get some real life examples to start ideating, you know, what could scaling my business look like for me? And I truly do think that if you're wanting to build a career in this space, whether it be service-based work, whether it be as a coach, if you're doing knowledge-based education work, we have to move past just the first offer that we do. We have to be able to grow. And you can't grow if you don't know. So enjoy these next 10 minutes. We'll see you in a little bit. And then we'll wrap this up. How do you know if you're ready to scale? If any of that is exciting to you? This That's is really important because time. we this is really important because we hear the word scale like throw like who has heard the word or the phrase scale your business? Someone telling you you can scale, you should scale, but you're not entirely fully sure what that means. Or you're a little like you're just like that sounds nice. Yes, same. Me too. So this is how you know if you are ready to take this journey. So number 1, 
you have a signature offer you or a product you have like your this is like you, your main thing and you easily sell it you're selling it people are buying it okay number 2 you have some ambition and you really want to elevate your business to the next level i say i would say this one goes with number 4 so i'm going to skip really quick then i'll go back to number 3 but you are tired of playing small and ready to step into your power I would say like you're kind of bored because yeah. you are selling the thing like you are selling something and people are get, like and you're just you can feel that you're ready for the next thing to take on something. You could also be someone who's tra a trained experienced coach consultant advisor therapist service provider you have experience under your belt. And aka you've you feel confident in your skills to the point where you could train someone else to like do the thing that you do. Um, and you want to move out of offering one-on-one -on -one services and you really want to expand while avoiding burnout. Because I, I know for me, I come from the mental health therapist, healthcare background. And while I love working with people one-on-one, -on -one, I truly do, you know, doing that, that exchange of time for the service constantly to make money, it gets really, it can be really tiring for a lot of folks, right? So um, these are just some clues as to if you are ready to scale. And I would say if you check off two of these, you're probably ready to make a move. Scale of one to five, five being the most ready. How ready are you to scale? And if you're like one, that's okay. Yeah, Still that's a little okay. bit of readiness. You're, if, if it's a one, I mean, it's great that you're here because you're, you're getting this info beforehand. So you can wow. actually make a plan instead of getting to the point where like, I need to do something. I don't know what to do. Now you'll know what to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. What does it look like to scale your skills effectively? I'm going to, we're going to give you some business models. Okay. You have probably seen these maybe before, maybe not, but these are actual business models that our students, community members, graduates, whoever have given us access to, to be able to see how they're actually making their money. Okay. You can feel free to take a photo of these so you can get an idea of what's possible. But as you can see from these graphs, they are a blend of, in this case, six different offers. So we have biweekly clients. Those would be one-on-one -on -one clients, mentoring clients, PCC contract work. If you're not sure what PCC is, that's the second level ICF credential. So that's ICF level two professional coaching credential. That is kind of the thing that, I mean, pays a lot. As you can see, it's a huge chunk of her income. Um, but it's also one of the things that gets you in the door to work at different agencies, organizations, companies often. So it's typically contract work, although it doesn't have to be. Um, graphic design, affiliate marketing, and book sales. There you have it. If you like that, make sure you take a picture. We have a few of these just to give you an idea. So average monthly revenue is around 9,500, uh, annual revenue is 114, and these are num actual numbers from last year. All right, uh, business model B, we have, this is pretty heavy on the one-on-one -on -one clients. So that's eight weekly one-on-one -on -one clients. And if you don't understand some of like my math or breakdown, please just let us know. Um, but her clients are paying $800 per month. She also sells 10 digital courses per month on average one speaking engagement per quarter, and 20 monthly memberships. So there you have it. And looking at your monthly revenue being just under 12 and annual revenue around 142. All right. And we're going to get into all of these little things, speaking monthly memberships and so forth. We have C, which is four one-on-one -on -one clients. So this particular coach is a good friend of mine and her coach, she's been coaching for, I think, about seven years now, I want to say. Um, so she does charge a pretty premium uh, price for her one-on-one -on -one clients. They pay her $1,500 a month. She never takes more than four. Um, she sells eBooks on Amazon. So on Amazon KDP, if you've ever thought about that, heard about that can be very good. Uh, she has podcast sponsors, she has 15 group coaching clients, and she does in-person retreats, which she did tell me that those are not a very lucrative part of her business, but she just loves them so much that she won't give them up. So I, we're also going to talk about that. Like if it's something you love, it may not be the highest 
revenue income stream or revenue stream in your business, but it adds so much value to your life. And we've said before, I feel like in IGC, we often say like we run life first businesses. So I want you to also be thinking about that. Like if you love it, And then she's like, oh, and then, you know, most of the people that come to her retreats end up signing up for something else anyway, or they're guests on her podcast. Like it's all life, if that makes sense. And then we have the last example for you. This is another, this person graduated from IGC, God, like 2016, maybe. Um, And also charges very premium, takes very few one-on-one clients. This is one of our students that was huge in mini courses. So her courses actually range quite a bit from like $200 to $900. Um, but she said that the average was around $300. So I just went with that number. She sells about a 1,000 of these mini digital courses a year. So that's obviously the biggest part for her. She's grown her email list over the last, what, seven or eight years. Uh, she's done keynote speaking and she's also an affiliate, meaning she's making affiliate commissions from different products on Amazon, different. I mean, she's also an affiliate of ours. So I'm sure we've paid her over the years, but that is a more uh, well-developed, I would say, and a little bit, I don't want to say quantity over quality because be, of course it's great quality, but you know, it does take a grown email list and a bigger community and following to be able to sell a thousand courses. But at the same time, it's growth over time. I don't know how else to say it. Anything you want to add to these, Sam? No. Is anyone excited? Does anyone think one of these A, B, C, or D looks like what their goal would be, what they would be looking to grow towards? I actually really like D. I've never sold a thousand mini courses, but I think that sounds Mm -hmm. like if you look at the IGC business model, it's like probably a couple hundred mini courses. And then what do we have? We have like high level group training, right? Like, so you can kind of, that would be the main, I would guess our square would be, can you guys see my cursor? Like that would be our like live courses, right? And then other little stuff, but yes, tell us what model appear appeals to you the most. And I hope everyone's getting excited at the possibility. It's like, if you know how to do something, if you have a skill, it can be packaged in so many different ways, so many different ways. And like, think about the phases of your life. Like, okay, I can go on on. and Sam told me we're not going to go over tonight. So we're not going to go over tonight. Okay. (laughs) Go ahead, Sam. If you want to make more money than you've made before, you need to do something differently. And this is not in the slide, but I'm just speaking from my own experience really quick. (laughs) It's really nice to sit on hard money, right? Even if it's not the kind of money you want to be making, if you know that it's coming in, if it's predictable, if it's stable, if it's whatever, then it is to go in the soft money route, which is, I don't know how much I'm going to make next month because I'm doing this new thing. We are, we have all been programmed to just be okay with stable money, even if it's not the kind of money we want to be making, even if we know it'll take us 30 years to get to the actual money we want to make, we're just programmed to be sitting in nine to fives like that, right? You need to get empowered like right now to take control of your financial situation and to take ownership of the fact that at any on any given day, you can make more money. And I will stand by that. On any given day, you can make more money. Yeah. You are not going to get a new result if you don't do a new thing. You have to do something different. And it's beyond just making a decision, folks. You can't just make a decision. You have to have a decision in combination with action. So this is very possible. You just have to be willing to make a decision and follow it up with some action. So let's get into some decisions you get to make. Let's get into the ways that you can scale. Cool. <clears throat> I did that though, too. I I stayed with one-on-one clients to the point where I was like burning out because I was afraid to add something new at first. So it can also happen with your, like whatever your signature offer is, you get so comfortable selling it that you're like afraid to put time, money, and energy into the next thing. So what did you think? If you loved that little snippet that you got from the workshop, one, I want you to let me know your takeaway and what you're thinking about business model wise down below in the comment section, whether you're watching me on YouTube or if you're listening to the, uh, the actual podcast itself, you can let us know in the Spotify, what did you think of this episode area? You can actually go into the Apple reviews portion and let us know what you're thinking. We love to read all of that. So please let us know what you're thinking after you went through those six business models. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about mine. So the first option that was present in 
the slideshow when Liv was talking about business models that were there. That's honestly pretty close to my business model. The only thing is that I don't have my PCC yet. I have all the hours done. I have all of the requirements done. I just got to go to the application, the test, and that's it. So that's happening this year for me, right? But that is honestly my business model. I have contract work that I do on a regular basis. Um, honestly, that what would, be, what would be considered like PCC contract work would be like mentor coaching. I would I would sub that for like what I do as a digital marketer here with IGC. And then I have my like few one-on-ones that I work with on a regular basis and my creative mentoring uh, clients that I work with on a regular basis and my graphic design work and my books that sell um, and, you know, the various areas where I have my income split. And for me, it works because I don't have to depend on just one area to make my money, but I can also get creative and I don't get bored. Like there's always something different to do every week. You know what I mean? And I want to talk about how I even came to wanting to build my business like that in the first place. So if you're not aware of who I am, my name is VP Wright. I know I mentioned that earlier, and I know I introduced myself as the digital marketing manager for IGC, but first and foremost, I am a poet. I launched my coaching business as a poet, and as a poet who had just gotten done doing a sold-out event, we had people come out from all over the city of Houston um, buy my book that I had just launched um, and worked with the coach to launch. And the launch went great. Me and my team, like, they were incredible. They helped me the along the way the entire time. And when it came to launch my business uh, in August of that year, after the event was over, I had already had so much social proof that, yeah, this is possible. And yes, you can do it to where filling up my one-on-one essentially wasn't an issue. And selling out my offers during that time wasn't an issue either. Even during the pandemic, that wasn't the problem. The problem was that I wasn't ready for life to hit. <laughs> So I had to essentially prepare and scale back, actually, because I didn't have a solid option in my business plan that allowed for life to happen, like divorce, having to take on your kids full time, things like that, right? And I think when you're thinking about scaling, you have to be able to break down what are the things that I'm good at? What can I get done in a pretty reasonable amount of time? And how much can I charge for it, right? So let's talk about that. And we can use me as an example. So outside of one-on-one coaching, the other things that I also do in my business are graphic design work, digital marketing work, creative mentoring work, which is a hybrid of coaching and consulting, videography in general, as a, separate from the video editing that I do. Uh, and then I have my books, I have my music, things that bring in royalties, right? And affiliate marketing. And the reason why I'm able to do that much is because everything doesn't happen at the same time. It all happens over the course of the month, over the course of each day. There's something different. When you're building out and you're scaling, especially if you're starting by yourself, you have to be able to categorize what you want to scale in two days. So for me, Monday through Wednesday, that's when I'm primarily like my deepest in IGC and I'm doing the podcast, I'm doing the planning for the social media. I'm doing all of my meetings with IGC, et cetera. Then Thursday, Friday, uh, that's when I'm doing a lot of my video editing projects. I'm going to see my clients here in Houston in person. We have meetings. I am probably putting like posts up like on Pinterest, like little little pins on Pinterest to help promote the book, which I'm doing more of now because I have a relaunch of the book coming up. Um, And just like being intentional with how I show up online. I personally am not like publicly doing any of my offers right now because I'm so close to being on the brink of being booked out. Like I just like, it doesn't make sense for me at the moment. But if I had a lot of dead time and I was really wanting to focus on booking those things out, then I would be marketing during my free time, right? Like it's all about how you show up, which I guess for my business doing life do the content that I make for the events, that typically is my marketing. It's how it's, it's why I've gotten so busy. But scaling doesn't have to be something that's difficult. It doesn't have to be strategic. And I will say that my process in scaling out my business and adding on the community factor of things was very strategic because it involved content creation and 
going to events and networking and being intentional my time, everything was always very intentional. There was never like, a, oh, I'm just going to go to this and stand around and do nothing or a, I'm going to start this account and then like never do anything with it. Everything has always been intentional. It's just the next part that I needed was the how. And so if you're sitting here and you're thinking about, okay, I have my coaching business or I have my graphic design business. I have my therapy business. I have my dance business. I have my certification business, I have whatever it may be, right? And you're taking on one portion of it, whatever it may be. It could be coaching. It could be consulting, events. Um, maybe you sell a book or a product, right? My question to you would be, what would be the next best step? for your clientele to take. So this is going to take some market research. The next step in their journey with you, what would be the next best step? Liv and Sam mentioned this a lot in the actual workshop itself, but all of the questions that you get from your clients as they're diving deep with you with your first offer is how you're going to build out your next offers. It's how you're going to scale out your business. For example, for me, I get a lot of questions on what software do I use? Um, how do I edit so quickly? Where do I get the ideas to build the content in the first place? How do I film? And so I, I'm already thinking about like planning a um, like nomadic workshop using iPhone. I could do and have that be a mini course. I already I'm already thinking about things like that, right? I'm already thinking about teaching creatives how to start side hustles, and these are things I already have, but need to be like tweaked. You know what I mean? But it's because. People ask me all of these questions all of the time about how I got started, what I did to get started, how I got into content creation, how I got into marketing. And for me, it was a five-year journey, but if I could help someone size that down to one to two years, then, you know, that's already worth the investment, right? So again, like how, do, how are you going to be able to identify that journey piece for your client and what's in it for them outside of one-on-one? -on -one? If someone can't afford one-on-one -on -one with you, then what would that downsell be, right? For me, like the lowest touch point that someone can get, get to me is uh, buying my book, my first book. It's $9 um, for now because it's not, it's not going to be after, after the month of May. But um, like that's the lowest touch point, right? Liv and Sam also mentioned that like sometimes people – really dive into the $10, $20 touch point where they can invest with you and, and see what you're about immediately. You can build out a product suite that helps build out your business and take your time during that process without it burning you out. The key is how are you going to do it? So there are a few tips in there that I gave you. I hope it helped. If you want a full like breakdown of your strategy to scaling and what your next steps are, there's actually a really dope free gift for you. So IGC is doing free business strategy sessions right now. And our team members that are hosting the sessions are going through from top to bottom and identifying through an assessment what your missing pieces are. So is it marketing? Is it support? Is it um, maybe like an offer that you need to fill in the gaps? Whatever it may be. And then from that missing gap they identify the programs or services that we offer within IGC and pair you with it so that way if you want to move forward with that option you can get the support you need or identify you with tools and systems to take it to the next step it's completely free this is something that honestly in my opinion would be like a $300 value because the people you're talking to are like PCC level support high intensive um, highly experienced folks in general who specialize in business scaling because they've been doing it for so long. In my honest opinion, having a very clear, detailed plan around business strategy in scaling, like you have to be able to see it, is what takes you from just doing one on one support and studying your coaching business to then looking at your business plan, identifying the gaps, and scaling that business to where you can actually say, hey, I've been able to do this. I may have left my job at this point and I can work for myself, but I really want to create a legacy for myself. I want to be able to train other people. I want to be able to mentor other people. I want to be able to guide folks in a way that's more elevated, that's more experienced. And luckily with 
the programs that we do have, like our level two program, um, that is an option as well, just because it leads you towards getting your professional coach credential and open the doors to a lot of corporations, universities, et cetera, that provide that opportunity too. So like I mentioned, get on that free business strategy call. It is F-R-E-E-99. There are so many good things that we're planning for y'all, but in order for us to do that, we need a podcast break. So if you loved this episode and you really want to make sure you don't stay out of touch with us, I'm going to challenge you to follow us on YouTube. A lot of those new changes that are happening involve some mini series coming to YouTube this summer, things that are quick, things that are easy to digest. Um, a lot like the many of us have been doing on the podcast, but just things that we can, you know, really show you how to do and guide you through, right? So those episodes are going to start going live next week on YouTube. Please go follow the page. We really want to make sure we're connecting with everyone that's listening here on the podcast and listen to all the interviews also there as well. Additionally, if you liked any of the audio versions of the podcast and you're like, well, I want to see the video version, they're on the YouTube page too. So you really need to go subscribe. Like, go subscribe to the YouTube page. If you're watching us on YouTube, hey, thank you. Subscribe. And like I mentioned earlier, book your free business strategy session. We'll see y'all when we return for season four, and I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday. Bye.